Well, good morning. This is your Bible class for Wednesday, um, April 22nd already. Wow, it's hard to believe time's going by so quickly. All right, so today you will be doing uh, pages 213 and 214. But I'm going to go ahead and read to you um, a story about the willies. All right, and this is a where next, Lord, is what it's called. Lord, where do you want us to go next? Argentina, Brazil, Chile? Thomas and Mabel Willie prayed faithfully for the Lord to show them where to go. The Lord kept impressing their hearts with the island country of Cuba. Although the Willies did not know why the Lord wanted them to go to Cuba, they obeyed, obeyed, and got it, obeyed God and went. They arrived in Pinar del Rio, a city of almost 200,000. As soon as they were settled, Mr. Willie preached the gospel to people who were interested and established a church. One day after church, a young man approached Mr. Willie. Senor Willie, do you, do you see those mountains over there? He asked, pointing to the mountains in the distance. I look at them every day, Mr. Willie said. I grew up in the mountains. I'd love to see them. The young man continued, In those mountains are thousands of people who have never once heard about Jesus Christ. They farm in the valleys and come into town about once a year. Doesn't anyone ever go to visit them? The young man shook his head. Never. Missionaries come from the United States, but they always stay in the city where there are doctors and medicines. No one cares about the mountain people of Cuba. Mr. Willie put his hand on the young man's shoulder and said, God cares, and I'm willing to go them, uh, to tell them about Christ, but how can I get there? Only on foot or on horseback, the man answered. Mr. Willie was getting too old to make such a long journey on foot, so he bought a horse. Because there was no electricity in the mountains, he made plans to go to the mountain people during the next full moon. Mr. Willie set out on his journey and rode all night through the mountains until his horse suddenly stopped. What's the matter, boy? Mr. Willie asked, patting his horse. It's not time to stop yet. It's barely daybreak. I know it's hard to see through this fog, but it won't hurt us. He squeezed the horse's side with his heels. Just as the horse started to move, the fog parted, and Mr. Willie could see down into the valley on his left. Several small huts were scattered in the valley, and Mr. Willie heard voices coming from them. Thank you, Lord, for stopping the horse, he whispered. Otherwise, I would have missed these people. The missionary rode down into the village, but by the time he got there, he couldn't see or hear anyone. He got off his horse, thinking to himself, they're scared, I guess, and hiding somewhere. Then he noticed a mov movement behind one of the huts. There you are, he called out in Spanish. Come on out, I saw you behind that building. An old man stepped out from the hut and walked toward him slowly. In a shaky voice, the man said, Forgive us, we were frightened. We did not know who you were, who you are, where you came from, or why you have come. I came from Pinar del Rio to tell you some good news. Have you ever heard about Christ? As Mr. Willie read the Bible and witnessed to the old man, other people appeared through the fog and gathered around them. Mr. Willie began preaching the good news of salvation to the crowd. He preached all day as the people sat still and listened in amazement. When Mr. Willie finished preaching, the old man trusted Jesus as a Savior. Not long after, his wife also trusted Christ. It was getting late. As Mr. Willie got ready to leave, the elderly couple begged him to come back. Come back next full moon. We will tell many other people so they can all come to hear you. So they can also come hear you. Mr. Willie returned to preach to the mountain people many times. Each time he went back, more people trusted Christ as their Savior. During one of Mr. Willie's visits, one of, our village, one of the villagers approached him. Senior Willie, we want to build a building to worship God in. They built a church in the village and many more churches in the surrounding areas. The Willies continued in faithful service for the Lord until Fidel Castro came to power in 1959. Then they were forced to leave and were not permitted to take anything with them. They had... They had to leave behind all their personal possessions. They also left behind 150 growing, well-established churches in the mountains. Although the Willies did not know why the Lord wanted them to go to Cuba when they left Panama, they were able to look back and see how God had used them to establish many of the mountain people in the children. In, in the, sorry, many establish, establish many of the mountain people in the Lord. As a result of God, uh, following God's leading, um, the Willies were able to lead many people to Christ and establish and build strong churches to continue making disciples. Wouldn't it be great to be able to tell a story um, like that about your own life? To be able to say, God, I'll go anywhere you want me to go. Just tell me where to go, Lord. Just tell me where. And then you do that, and then God leads you to do things like what the Willies were able to do. Pretty, uh, pretty exciting, uh, if you think about it. I mean, it really is. Now, um, we're going to go ahead and cover a little bit of 2.13, and uh, I'll let you do 2.14 on your own. By the way, at, on 2.14, on the very bottom 
um, there are questions that you have to answer. They will count for points. And uh, so I'm expecting you to answer. They're very easy to answer. And so um, that's what you need to do. All right, and I'm writing in here so that Mrs. Haynes knows that when she counts them. All right, so on page number um, 213, Jeremiah 17.9 says, The heart is deceitfully wicked, or the heart is desperately, lit, desperately wicked and deceitful above all things. Who can know it? Who can know the heart? And um, that's a good question to ask. But um, the uh, so basically, what is that verse saying that we we are as far as who who am I before I trust in Christ? Um, and that is we are deceitful and wicked. And I think that um, that is something we can see at times in our lives that is very true. Now, Second Corinthians five seventeen um, in that verse, and I'll go ahead and uh, read that to you. And let's see here. So 2 Corinthians 5, 17. Now, it's a very familiar verse. You'll, you'll recognize it when you hear it. It says, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. And so what is it that a um, person who is, uh, who are you after you trust in Christ? A new creation. That's what that word creature means, a new creation. Um, Ephesians 2, 1. Um, if you go there, Ephesians 2, 1 says this, And you hath he quickened who were dead in trespasses in sin. And so it says, in, uh, What were we before Christ? Dead in trespasses or dead in sin. Either one of those would be fine. Um, Colossians 2, 13, though, says this. Um, and it says that, And you being dead in your sins, that's what we were, in uh, and the uncircumcision of your flesh hath he quickened together with him, having forgiven you all trespasses. Quickened together means to be made alive. So we are made alive again. Um, Luke 15, 4. Luke 15, 24, sorry. Luke 15, 24. Uh, let's get there. Says, um, For this my son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. And they began to be married. So what were we before um, that? And it says they were dead and lost is what we were. Dead and lost. And then um, Luke 15, 24 also says, what is he afterward? He is alive and found. He says um, he, is, uh, he was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. Okay. Um, and so Isaiah 64, 6. Now that, um, this verse, 64, 6. Uh, says, but we are all as an unclean thing, and all our unright, all our righteousnesses, all of our good things that we do on our own, are as filthy rags. That's what they're equal to. Um, and we all do fade as a leaf, and our iniquities, like the wind, have taken us away. And so, according to what were we like, according to Isaiah sixty four six, we are unclean, filthy rags, unclean, filthy rags. As an unclean thing, and all their righteousness are as filthy rags. And then it says in Isaiah 64, 8, But now, O Lord, thou art our father. We are the clay, and thou art the potter. And we all are the work of thy hand. And so we are God's work. We are God's handiwork. We are God's children. Any of those would suffice for an answer there. Um, Romans 5, 10. On this last part here. Romans 5, 10 says, For if, when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his Son, much more, being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. All right, and so um, we were what before? If, when we were enemies, we were enemies of God, enemies before uh, we were saved. And then afterward, 1 John 3.10, probably a familiar verse to you as well, or at least hopefully it should be, um, 1 John 3.10, In this the children of God are manifest, are shown. This is what manifest means, to be revealed. And the children of the devil, whosoever doeth not... Uh, and the, so so let, I want to tie that again. In this the children of God are manifest, and the children of the devil. Whosoever doeth not righteousness is not of God, neither he that loveth not his brother. And so those that are, this is saying that those that are not, are not the child of God, but those that are, are the child of God. And so we are his children. So that's what we are. 
Well, hopefully that's helped for you. And enjoy your rest of your day. Have a wonderful Wednesday. Bye.